Let's take a look at the perpetual system now. We'll use the same data that we had in Monday's problems, the last two problems, where we were looking at the periodic system. And I want to take note that in the last tutorial, we used the data in E6 4B and looked at the periodic system. And under the perpetual system, exercise E6-5B asks you to calculate ending inventory under the three methods, LIFO, FIFO, and weighted average. And I just want you to note that your answers will be the same as they were under the periodic method for that problem. So go ahead and work through that, and you should get the same results for ending inventory that we got in the prior tutorial using that same data. I want to use the data in E6-2B to do problem E6-3B. Let's take a look at that. This exercise asked us to calculate cost of goods sold under the perpetual assumption and it asks us to do that using FIFO, first in, first out, LIFO and weighted average. So let's do FIFO first. Cost of goods sold. We still have sold 180 units. Now under the perpetual system, remember, we are adjusting cost of goods sold and inventory all the time. So we have to watch our dates. We have to make sure that we're not trying to sell stuff that we don't already have yet. This sale occurred on May 16th. So we're limited to selling out of these two layers because the layer in, on May 24th wasn't even there. We hadn't bought it yet. So there's no way we can sell out of that layer. So with that in mind, let's make our calculations. First in, first out. So we're selling the older layers first. They were the first in. And we are looking for 180 units. The first layer has 150 units. I'm going to keep track of my dates here too. So that was my May 1st layer. 150 times $30, those were $30 units, that's $4,500 in that layer. And we need another 30 units out of our May 12th layer. And those are $35 units. <clears throat> so that's a thousand and fifty. So we fully accounted for the hundred and eighty units that we sold at a cost of five thousand five hundred and fifty dollars. So that didn't change. We had the same number under the periodic system. Let's take a look at LIFO now. Last in, first out. Okay, now notice, as I said, we can't sell out of this May 24th layer on May 16th. It's just not there. So we're still starting at the newest layer that we had available on the 16th, which was May 12th. So, on May 12th, I am going to grab that entire layer. There's 100 units in there. And those are $35 units. So that's $3,500. And I need another 80 units 
and I'm going to grab that out of my May 1st layer. So we've got 80 times 30, and that's equal to 2400. So that gives us, let's see, we fully accounted for the 180, and that gives us 5900 for cost of goods sold under LIFO. So that's different than what we had under the perpetual method. So you have to take care of these layers. You have to be very careful about those layers. Weighted average, a little bit different here too. Okay, weighted average. We only had these two layers as of the state of sale. So we need to add up the total amount of inventory that we had. So 4,500 and 3,500, that's $8,000 that we've got tied up in inventory. And that's comprised of 150 and 100. So that's going to be divided by 250 units. And that gives us a unit cost Average unit cost of $32 per unit. So cost of goods sold is going to be equal to 180 times that average unit cost of $32. And that's equal to $5,700. So that's different than the number we calculated under the <coughs> periodic method as well. Let's take a look at how we would calculate ending inventory under the perpetual method. And again, we really need to watch our dates. We're going to calculate ending inventory after the May 16th sale. So this is ending inventory on May 16th after we sold the 180 units. So let's look at FIFO first. Ending inventory is at 516. We have sold all of the first layer and we sold 30 units out of the May 12th layer. So that leaves us 70 units in that May 12th layer. And those are $35 units. So that gives us an ending inventory value of $24.50. And that's after that May 16th sale. Notice that on May 12th we had $8,000 of inventory. And also notice that if we add together cost of goods sold and ending inventory that fully accounts for the 8,000 units that we had. Let's take a look at LIFO now. Under LIFO, we sold our entire 100 units out of the May 12th layer and 80 units out of the May 1st beginning inventory layer. So that's going to leave us 70 units in that May 1st layer. And those are $30 units. So our ending inventory after that sale on 516 would be equal to $2,100. And again, 
if I add together the cost of goods sold in any inventory and fully accounted for that 8000 that I had on hand. Weighted average, again, we can just count the number of units that we had in ending inventory. We had to have had 70 on 516. So if we multiply that by our average cost of $32, we wind up with $22. And those two numbers also reconcile the 8,000. So be careful with your timelines. That's why I've laid these problems out in this manner so you can watch those timelines and keep track of where you are on the timelines and keep track of when you purchase stuff, because remember, you can't sell stuff that's not there.